What's up my pretty peoples? In this video, I'm taking you on a journey through my brain so you can see how I do a design process and turn this here tube into a boom mount for my GoPro. I'm gonna 3D print some brackets to slide over this tube to mount to the wall so I can position my GoPro however which way I want. All right, let's do it. When I start designing something, I usually start with just a pencil and paper and sketch out generally what I think the solution is gonna to be to my problem. Now, once I have a general idea, I jump straight into CAD and start putting dimension to some of those concepts. And as you see here, it's very easy to rapidly change and grow a concept into something that you didn't even initially think was going to happen. So as you see here, I've made a lot of these features and then towards the end, if you see and compare the models that I ended up 3D printing with these concepts that I initially am roughing out, they look totally different. And that's because as I'm going through this, I'm also thinking about the manufacturing process. And in this case, that's 3D printing. With additive manufacturing, you get an inherent weakness across layers. So as you're printing your model, you're not gonna have the strength in some directions as others. So you gotta keep that in mind as well when designing. This second half of the bracket that mounts the wall is a really good example of explaining how dynamically changing your design is almost essential. I started off with something that looks like a C with two holes in the middle. And when I was looking at that, I just knew immediately that's not gonna hold up to the, the torsion on the bar whenever it's cantilevered out. So then I went ahead and added uh, these supports above and below so that now we have three screws going from the top, middle, and bottom, which will distribute the load from the tube much better and prevent the plastic from breaking. After I assembled the two brackets in an assembly, I noticed a couple things about the bracket that held onto the tube that just didn't uh, make me happy. One of the things was that it had a male end that went into the inner diameter of the tube and I just immediately was like, oh yeah, that's gonna break off if I'm printing it, where the forces of the boom arm are gonna be acting on the layers in the same plane that they were printed in, which is exactly what you want to try not to do. So knowing that I was going the wrong direction, I redesigned the bracket that held into the tube by going with something that grabbed on the outer diameter and had a lot more meat to it that would help prevent any type of layer delamination or failure. With the new bracket finished, I will go ahead and throw it in the assembly of the wall mounting bracket and check to make sure that I still have the angle range of motion that I was wanting for the boom arm. And once all that's good, then all I have to do is slice it and 3D print it. Importing the first tube bracket into my favorite slicer, Simplify 3D, I go ahead and set up the orientation so that I can get my fans on it cooling and preview all the layers to make sure there's no weird artifacts or anything crazy. Everything looks pretty good here, so we go ahead and save it to the SD card and print. The material I used for this print was Colorfab XT, and I didn't think I would need a fan to cool it off because I thought it behaved like ABS, but that is not the case. So learning from my previous mistake, I set up a nice cooling fan on this print, and everything came out awesome. Using the cooling fan, I reprinted the tube bracket. This is where a lot of people end up cutting their fingers off or stabbing themselves in the hand. So what I do is I get a wide, flat razor blade and I slowly wedge it between the part and the build plate, which pries it off. And so far it's prevented me from cutting my hands, so you might want to give it a try. The first piece I printed without a fan, you can see the beginning layers were okay, but then eventually it started to over extrude and the layers started curling. A second print with no cooling fan, but with lowered printing temperatures revealed a similar over extrusion but then it continued and then eventually went into under extrusion. I recognized this strange transition from over extrusion to under extrusion as heat creep in the hot end, added some cooling fans to help the hot end keep cool, and presto bango, I got some good parts. Now that we've printed the parts into reality, we can actually fit them up, drop the pin in, and see if they have the range of motion that I wanted, and make sure that the clearances and everything are working. So it looks like everything's good here. So now all that we have to do is get the tube and slide it into its bracket. I did intentionally size the inner diameter of the tube bracket smaller than the outer diameter of the tube. That way there'd be interference and I could just press fit it in and that way I didn't have to glue it or anything. So I had to do a little bit of sanding to make sure that it fit, but it wasn't too bad, and the result was perfect. Next, I find a stud in the wall so I can securely mount the wall bracket.
Okay, so the one thing that I did not realize when I was doing all this was that my GoPro can slide up and down the boom, but it cannot rotate, which kind of prevents me from getting the angles that I was wanting. So I'm going to need to either buy or design some type of bracket that allows the GoPro to pivot on the mount. Whenever you put the GoPro out on the end of the boom, it was such a cantilevered force that it sagged a couple inches, and I didn't really like this. So I strengthened up the wall mount to get rid of the sagging. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something in this video, and at the very least, I hope you enjoyed seeing my process of coming up with the concept, 3D modeling the design, and printing that into reality. To me, that's just one of the craziest cool things that we can do now with 3D printers that we couldn't do before. Well, we could with like CNC machines, but <laughs> who has one of those in their living room? Nobody. Anyways, if you have any comments, leave them down below, and I will see you next time.